Julie can you come over here? I was monitoring Phobos when I read an electronic signal. Are you sure? I don't see anything. Maybe it was just a reflection. Yes the instruments recorded it. Look, there it is again. Keep monitoring it and let me know if there are any changes. Matt I was thinking. When I had the bad guy on the table I gave him truth serum to get a straight answer out of him. He said that Earth's minerals are back where they were because they were never mined in this timeline. That sounds right but is there a point to all this? Well yes anything that humans did will be erased in our timeline. What I was worried about is the asteroid that was deflected in 2115. It was on a direct collision course with the Earth and it was the biggest we had ever seen. It was nicknamed Satan's Fist if I remember correctly. I will have Derek do a search on it. Derek I have a job for you. I need you to look up information on the Satan's Fist asteroid. Meet Julie and myself over at the station. Here is the information that I found about the Satan's Fist asteroid. The technical name is Asteroid 2101A. When it was first discovered it was thought to be an enormous asteroid, but as it got closer, Earth science realized it was actually a planet. What was the size and mass of the object? We never had an exact measurement on the object. It is believed that it was Earth-sized. What was the trajectory? Wasn't it on a direct course to hit the Earth? Yes it was headed right for us. The nations of the Earth got together in unprecedented cooperation in a planetary effort to stop it. In 2115 a combination of nuclear weapon explosions and towing spacecraft safely removed it from solar system. This cooperation stopped most of the fighting on the Earth ushering in peace. Okay Derek I want you and Jake to get together and scan for the object. In this timeline it has not been deflected. Julie I want you to take two crew members on the ship and go have a look at it unless Jake and Derek say it is not there. Matt there may be another problem. Twice we got what looked like an electronic signature from the moon Phobos. We are not certain of it yet. We will wait on that unless we get more signals. Thank you for coming. Our objective is a planet or asteroid that is headed for Earth. We are to take exact readings of the surface, trajectory and anything else we can get. We are not planning on landing. Where did this come from? All of a sudden an asteroid that we cannot do anything about? It is known as the Satan's Fist Asteroid. It was deflected five years ago in the other timeline. I would like to come along if you don't mind. This object threatens Mars and that we cannot tolerate either. I love the company, Zeely. It will be a bit of a trip getting there but you will have some time to get to know us girls. We are here just to make out a report. Well there it is. Gina go to the science station and take readings. Please allow me. I would like to take readings if you don't mind. Your instruments are rather simple and present no challenge. 
Mass and gravity are about 99% of Earth norms. Gases are boiling off and forming an atmosphere similar to Earth's atmosphere as well. Organic matter is abundant on land areas but there are no indications of life. Well Zili do you think this is a natural occurrence or is it artificial? I believe it is a safe assumption that this planet is an artificial construct. We have prophecies concerning the coming of such a planet. Some regard it as a savior, and others, a devil. Heather what is happening? What triggered the yellow alert? Julie there are heat beams coming from Phobos. They are not a danger to us but it is very disturbing. Gina send a message to the station about the heat beams. Message Julie we are to return immediately. Julie I am going to take the ship over to Phobos to the monolith area which is where the main action seems to come from. Matt we could take the shuttle and it would be easier. Under the circumstances with actions going on that we don't understand I want to be flying something a little more solid. I will set up a biodome so that we will not have to use spacesuits. Good Julie. Take two others and be ready to leave quickly if you need to. We are on Phobos now. This could be a dangerous situation. The environment is set up so we can walk freely out there but stay inside of the dome. Well I could use a little adventure. Let's go out. So is this the Phobos monolith? I have heard about it but never seen it before. What is the story behind it? It was spotted by a spacecraft a long time ago. The space agency at the time, NASA I think they were called denied that it was anything unusual. Anyone who said it was strange was called a conspiracy theorist. Julie come back here. There seems to be an opening. Either one of you can back down if you don't want to go in there. I would not miss it. Let's go down and see what is there. We need to learn everything we can hear and relay it to the station. Missy I need you to go check into the station and let Matt know what is happening and what we found. I saw some writing on the wall. Relay images of that too.
Discovery to station come in please. Referring to the picture, this is Phobos, the moon that Discovery is on. We have detected heat beams being shot at the new planet that is headed our way. Discovery has sent data over here which we are still going over. Our options are limited at this point because this planet is on a collision course with Earth. I am open to suggestions as to how to stop it. Now I will turn this over to Derek. The large crater is the area where the heat beams originate. The monolith is located elsewhere. Our team went inside where incredibly there is a control station. Here is a photo of the monolith area. This object is huge. For decades the public was told it was just a rock. The fact that Phobos is affecting the inbound planet proves that this was pre-planned, though we don't know by whom. The planet was deflected in 2115 by a combination of towing spacecraft and nuclear detonations. It took all resources and countries to do this. We do not have nuclear weapons, though we could use an antimatter weapon. Derek do we have enough antimatter to do this? Yes we do, though it will be dangerous to do so. I will keep this option open. If we do nothing then the earth will be gone and the Zorkon stopped. It seems such a waste. I am also going to recalculate the trajectory of this planet because the mass is greater than initially thought. Next we have some symbols to view. This is one page of symbols that we have. The other page I will put up appears to be a variation of ancient Sanskrit. This is the other page of text that we found. It is incredible that it is linked apparently to Earth. You are doing great Derek. Keep working on this. I would like to know who we are dealing with. You and Missy can relax for a few minutes. I am going to go check the other passageway we saw.
There is some strange equipment over in the other area and I need you both for analysis. The same routine applies here. I have gone over those strange colored bolts and the results are weird to say the least. What do you make of those colored balls on the display rack? They seem to be in between living and non-living matter. I cannot really call them eggs or seeds. It is a form of life generation none of us has seen before. In times like this we could use Jake over here. One idea that I have is that the Phobos equipment is going to send those balls to the new planet. That would be amazing to watch. Do either of you have an idea why this would happen? More than likely Julie this is a prelude to colonization. I don't see anything else it can be. We will make out a report for the captain. There is not much more to learn here. Captain I think that there may have been a mistake in the early calculations of the previous timeline. Explain it to me Derek. Where did they go wrong? At that time they did not have an accurate measurement of the planet's gravity. I found when I ran the information through that the planet will hook around Jupiter the same way that it did in the other timeline, but the effect will slingshot it in a different direction. Then what direction do you say it will head in? It will miss us and Earth by a wide margin and assume an orbit 93 million miles from the Sun. Derek what do you mean? It will be in the same orbit as the Earth? Exactly. Whoever did this planned it well. The object should go into orbit on the far side of the Sun from the Earth. If I am right, there will be no collision. How long until we know for certain? It is starting around Jupiter now. We should know in a few hours though the calculations were run three times. Alright Derek let me know when it completes its turn around Jupiter. Field Commander's Log The Planet to everyone's amazement is now on a course that will cause it to orbit opposite of the Earth. Report, Jake what is going on? Why are we at yellow alert? Captain a ship has been launched from Phobos. It is huge. 
It appears to be headed for the new planet. Can you get an idea of its purpose? Based on what we have seen so far, I would say that it is a cargo ship. Call the station and let them know. Ask them if we should pursue. Matt we have an incoming message from the ship. They are requesting instructions. Tell them to stand by while we discuss the situation. Call Julie. Julie I think we should send the ship after the one launched by Phobos, staying at a safe distance and observe it. I wanted your input. Matt I agree. As long as we are following it to the planet we may as well have a team to do some quick exploration of the planet. Put a team of four together and tell them to keep their distance. They are not to interfere with the ship unless they have to defend themselves. Commander's Log Alicia, Heather, Jake, and I are going to pursue the alien craft headed towards the new planet. We are ordered to observe, not interfere. Matt I wanted to test a theory I have about the objects that were found over on Phobos. You are not thinking about bringing those spheres over here are you? No I believe we can hatch them under the biodome to see what they do. Alright but remove the biodome afterward as we will not be going back over there. You, Sally and Jill can take the shuttle over there. Don't take more than a few hours. I guess it is the three of us for the time being. Missy I was going to suggest that you search for signs of communication between the ship and anything outside of the solar system. That will be hard as it is far away from us. If Derek will help me we can scan for something out there that could be talking to it.
From here we go down into the complex and gather the nodules if any of them are left. Then I expose them to ultraviolet light. If I am right, they will hatch. This must be the control center they told us about. We need to go to the other one where the nodules are stored. Here they are. We will each grab one and take them to the surface to hatch them if that even works. Captain's log we have been pursuing the alien craft for several hours now. The new planet has successfully swung around Jupiter and it is headed for orbit. We will keep a close eye on this ship. Julie it looks like it may be turning. We may have have gotten its attention. Alicia report on the blue alert. Is it the station calling us? No it is the alien craft. It is contacting our system and asking for a conversation with you through Oracle. Very well Alicia see if you can set that up. We are here for peaceful contact. I am the controller of the ship that you are following. Who are you and why do you follow me? I am Commander Julie James of the Earth Spaceship Discovery. You have sent a planet into our solar system and we are investigating it. My scans currently show no civilization in this solar system. The Earth was attacked by aliens and we were erased from time, except for a few of us. Do you mean us any harm? No we don't. Our orders forbid us from interfering. Peaceful contact is what we want. I am leaving now. I am going to seed life forms that are useful to our species onto the planet. You are welcome to explore but set up no permanent dwellings there. Heather I think they are friendly but please keep an eye on them. We don't even know who they are. I will. My scans show that they look peaceful. We each brought out one nodule. I will focus the beam on one at a time and we will observe the results.
wonder how long this will take. The captain wants us back. Has everyone here had their curiosity satisfied? I know I have. That was a scary thing.
While we are out here the unknown will be commonplace so we need to get used to it. Let's go inside the station and give our report. How did everything go? I would suppose that you have some data for me. It was okay if you like snakes and spiders which I don't. The eggs hatched and that was what came out, plus a very strange plant. Are we compatible with these life forms? Well we can work on that over time. What is that thing? It must have clung to the ship on the way back. It is nothing like the other things that we saw. It is kind of cute. Maybe we can adopt it for a pet. I suggest that we turn in and bring on a fresh crew. The alien craft went into orbit around the new planet, and began using a beam to send the life-generating nodules to its surface. As the seeds of life settled onto its surface, an entire new biosphere began to emerge. The planet, carefully crafted by unknown entities was alive. No one knew what this alien genesis would bring, but for the young teens it was a marvel they could not even understand. Captain's Log We have watched as the alien craft deposited its life forms on the planet's surface. Then it returned to Phobos like nothing had happened. 
As mission commander I have asked the captain if we could land and he said it was okay as long as we took precautions and weapons. Jake wake up we are approaching the new planet. We need your expertise as we will be landing. Look at it Jake. Isn't it something? An alien race has created a whole new planet, and we are going down there. I need you on the science station. Skin for a good place to land. Jake what are you seeing as far as life forms on the planet, and atmosphere, and temperature? Life is being generated as expected. I am not seeing much in familiar life forms at this time. The atmosphere, temperature, and living conditions appear to be compatible with our species. To all crew members, all four of us. We are going to land on the new planet. Everyone will get their chance on the surface. I am going to have Jake and Heather join me and Alicia will stay on the ship for the first round. I want the communications station manned at all times. We need to be armed at all times. Many of these life forms look dangerous. Jake I want readings on everything. We landed on the planet only to find an alien landscape, which was no surprise of course. The scene before us was surreal to say the least, and we felt the need to explore. What was the secret of the alien race that did this? We still did not know but we were so enthralled by the scene that we did not care.
Heather I might be tempted to call these trees willows except for the colors. I might be tempted to settle down here, Jake, except that we were warned against that. I would not mind staying either. I believe we could live here with a little work. It seems fairly compatible with our life cycle. Station to Discovery Captain Stone wants to know your status. Everything is fine. We have landed and there are multitudes of creatures we have not seen before. I hate to spoil your fun but the captain wants you back here fairly soon. Take your readings and return. Okay Missy we will be back before you know it. Captain's Log We all feel a little saddened leaving this planet. The visit was invigorating. Still we all realize that there will be more missions to the planet. It is only a matter of time. There is one thing that still bothers me. We don't have a name for the new planet. Would anyone here like to volunteer one? Matt I was going to suggest the name Ictomai. What an interesting name that is. Where did you get it from? I guess you did not know this but I am a Lakota. Iktimai is one of our legends. Tell me a little about this legend. I never heard of Iktimai. In Lakota mythology, Iktimai is a spider trickster spirit, and a culture hero for the Lakota people. According to the Lakota, Iktimai is the son of Inyan, the rock, a creator god similar in form to other male creator gods. Iktimai has a younger brother, Aya, who is a destructive and powerful spirit. One story of Iktimai goes that in the ancient days, Iktimai was KSA, or wisdom, but he was stripped of this title and became Iktimai because of his troublemaking ways. What a curious choice that is. I am considering the possibility that you don't quite trust those who sent the planet here. Iktimai was hungry and saw some fat ducks on a pond. He tricked the ducks by hypnotizing them, and proceeded to slaughter them. Let that legend be a warning. I realize that we cannot do anything about it anyway, but I don't trust this situation. Okay my friend. I understand your concerns. Iktimai is the name of the planet. As for the aliens, we will have to wait and see if they come. Captain's log a deep state of forbidding is settling over the station. Our civilization is gone, and now others are moving in. We have no way to stop it or even be sure we should. Life on the station is slowly returning to normal, whatever that is. <laughs> 